Hello, Jackson Point here, and I wanted to give you guys some information that you may have not seen before, you might know a little bit about and want to know more. But the use of IDEN radios or Nextel radios for SHTF purposes are just general communications from point to point. These are older radios, these are basically cell phones with a push to talk functionality. They're made by Motorola, they're called the i355 and uh, they got a lot of use especially when you don't have service. These things will be point to point. You can set them up into what's called direct talk. There's other names for them in the uh, arrangement that uh, Nextel uses. It's called direct talk and you can set it up for 150 different communication paths besides private and the private requires the use of a active working SIM card. The 150 paths are broken into 10 channels and 15 different codes per uh, channel and that you can also listen in on any one channel in any conversation that is processed through that channel. What is great about these is they are digital radios. They are frequency hopping spread spectrum so not impossible but very difficult to intercept if you were able to intercept it with your scanner or someone that had some communications device that was would say probably below ten thousand um, dollars they wouldn't hear anything but a few statics pops clicks and some tones uh, even if they were right next to it however if somebody is listening to the same channel and has the same type of device and they're in open mode or on your uh, code they can hear what you're saying what is really neat about these things is their security and their range. Uh, being digital, they fall off like HDTV. So you have it, have it, have it, and then you don't. You don't end up with a lot of white noise. It basically just disappears. If you do have communications between the two devices or multiple devices, you'll be able to tell when you get out of range of what the devices are that you're talking about, as it will say, uh, out of range. As far as distance goes, I would say that they probably um, exceed or equal FRS, GMRS radios as far as handheld. These things use six uh, tenths of a watt, not a lot of power, uh, but again it's on a band that uh, doesn't have uh, a lot of noise on it and using the frequency hopping spread spectrum, it uh, allows you to get a little bit further and guarantee better communications. These also have an extended static antenna. Uh, the typical antenna that comes on these are, are uh, consistent with the candy bar uh, cell phones of years ago to where you would pull it out in order to uh, maintain good communications. And I've chose on these particular devices, as you can see the antennas, to put the static antennas on there and that way I can maintain the greatest distance or greatest range at all times and don't have to worry about the person that I'm communicating with or the person trying to reach me does not have the antenna up. These phones are mil spec qualified and they will put up with water and shock, dust and all different kinds of abuses that you can give them. In any event, these are highly reliable radios slash cell phones. And I keep repeating slash cell phones. The reason why is because they still will work as a cell phone. There's a provider out there that will allow you to register your phone and get it on the network for very much nearly nothing. You can get a starter kit directly from Boost for twenty dollars it'll give you the sim card which is required to make these things work as well as it will give you ten dollars worth of service you need to update that service with ten dollars every ninety days so you want to make sure you're using up the minutes depending on the plan that you get on the ten minute the ten dollar plan is probably the the most advantageous if you're going to use this for direct uh, talk um, allows ten cents per minute communications and you can also turn on the web functionality. I've purchased that for my phones due to the fact that according to what I understand from Boost and other users that uh, once I get this up on the network 
the cell phone slash radio and the provider will communicate with each other and if there's any firmware updates available to me or any Java updates that I need I can get those directly from the provider while I have it. Now you're looking right now at one phone that I just restarted and you will notice that it says no service. I've got this set up to where when it uh, identifies that it doesn't have any service or it identifies that it does have service uh, you can go ahead and get it directly into uh, direct talk mode. One of them is automatic, the other one's not. Obviously this one's not automatic. What I do to get it to go into direct talk mode is I press the end key, give it a few seconds, and it kind of restarts itself into direct talk mode. And you'll see it come up in the channel and code that I have it set up for. You can personalize these things. When you get one directly from eBay or whatever provider that you get them from, uh, they will usually come with a battery and usually come with a battery charger. Uh, SIMs are back and forth. You may or may not get a SIM. SIMs are fairly cheap. You can get those from around a dollar to four or five dollars. And again, if you want to get one from Boost, it's twenty dollars for a starter set. The uh, Batteries themselves, when you get one from a provider, are probably the bottom of the barrel and you want to look at getting a, a better set of batteries. There's still new batteries out there and there's a lot of good used batteries. As far as I can tell from my research, these things were uh, created in 2003 and I don't know how long they were manufactured until, but uh, the manufacturer and many of the users have really hung on to these things. They're known as construction phones or government phones. They really take a beating. Some of the phones you may find on eBay might be a little more beat up than others, but generally they'll put up with a lot of uh, wear and tear. If you look around, you may find sets of phones. Uh, I saw an auction on eBay the other day go for $7.50 plus $10 in shipping for five phones with batteries and chargers, no SIMs. Somebody got a great deal. Again, once you have these things set up on direct talk, whether you have a working SIM or not as far as service provision, you will be able to have these things communicate with each other over a reasonable distance. Because these things have uh, an external antenna connector, you can also connect them to a Wilson adapter, which will allow you to connect this to an external antenna on your vehicle, and potentially even uh, have an external antenna on a, a house. Uh, I don't have one set up right now, but I do have an 8 to 900 megahertz Yagi that I'm going to probably try one of these out. I've seen where people have been able to successfully in, in uh, some, I guess, restricted environments of getting around nine miles worth of range out of these. Again, they're point to point, uh, uh, less than one watt. Uh, they are, again, 0.6 watts of power. I wanted to show you what it looked like when one of these phones was receiving a call. This is a test, this is a test. As you can hear, I'm very close to it. Let me get a little further away and quieter. This is a test. And if I had multiple phones or multiple radios connected in this manner, they would all hear what I had to say as long as they were in range. Very often, whenever you do anything in one of these phones, uh, you can press this button right here, the menu button, and it'll bring up additional items that you may not be aware of. So now I'm going to go ahead and bring up the uh, direct talk feature again. Uh, like I said before, these bottom three buttons are all set up to go directly into direct talk. And you'll see how quick it will go. And we're there. And then I'm going to go do the setup as I did before. So we go into the direct talk setup and I do the direct launch on and that is so that whether I have service or not or a sim that does have service or not I can get it to go into direct talk mode faster while you're in direct talk you're not going to be able to receive calls 
I have read that you can use uh, 911 functionality. I haven't tested it out. Uh, I'm not put myself in a position to where I'm willing to do that. As I stated earlier, the keys down here, this one, this one, and this one, I have set for the direct talk. And, but I have this one up here set for GPS. When you choose GPS, you get these three things here, position, privacy, and interface. Position will indicate your position as of now. You press refresh, and if the GPS is active, actively communicating with the satellites, it will show you the last time it had a fix on you. I'm indoors, it will not be able to communicate with the satellites. In any event, you can tell where you're at at that particular time as long as it's outside and you may be able to give that position to someone else or save it in another manner. I'm going to go back and then the interface which uh, to me is the biggest deal is the case where this puts out Nimia sentences and that is where you can take this and treat it as a serial device to communicate with maybe a PC that has an application running on it or in ham radio APRS or uh, uh, for the case of the unit in scanners I'm not sure if others have it yet or not but uh, as a indicator to where you're located so it can reprogram the scanner based on your location and the frequencies it could be using. I will discuss the NIMIA and uh, the GPS capabilities in part two and a little bit in part three, but in the meantime I wanted to at least show you what it looked like and how to get to it. This pretty much concludes part one of my introduction into the i355. There are other phones that meet these same qualities. I like this one. It's bigger. You won't mistake it for your cell phone if you're using your cell phone in a uh, situation where you do have services. Uh, you can also uh, see that it's got a good size screen. There's less parts to break. You don't have hinges. And uh, it seems to have a lot of options, accessories, and millions of batteries and chargers out there. There's plenty of other devices, accessories, as I stated. Uh, you know, it was one thing that I showed you was the antenna. There's also an external speaker mic that will hook up to the bottom. As I stated, the Nimia cable. There's uh, static mounts uh, There's uh, so that you can mount it in a car. So take a peek. I will give more information in the video and probably at the bottom of this and uh, probably will not be answering any questions in this video. I will probably redirect you to a site that is more interested in communications in general and do my best to answer your questions there. Hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to part two as I do. This is a great device and hopefully we never run into a situation where we have to use it pre or during SHTF. Until then, be safe.